Okay, let's start the meeting. Good to see all of you here. I appreciate you coming. It's been a while since we met. The last time we met was on September 16th, where we got a great update from Todd and Chad concerning the, where we're going with the Senior Activity Center building. Um, they did a great job, and I forgot to even say thank you to Melissa for putting together a great presentation. Although you guys did have something to do with that, I apologize, but Melissa did a great job in putting together all those charts and stuff. It made the, the presentation very worthwhile and understandable for me. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes from the last meeting, September 16th? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I need to alter one thing. Um, I was on via phone, and it says that I was having to comment. Ah, that was me. I guess I would have via motion to Okay, we'll amend that, okay? Yeah. Very good. Any other comments with regards to the minutes? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Yes, I move to approve the minutes as amended. Okay. Do I have a second? Andrew seconds it. Okay, very good. All in favor say aye. Aye. The minutes have aye. been aye. Very good. Thank you, Allison. That was Allison, right? Yes. Oh. Okay. The next. And Dana, and Dana's on the line. Very good. We've invited Todd to the meeting to give us an update on where we stand. A lot's happened over the last six weeks since we last met. I've also invited, I caught uh, Chad in the hallway and I said, Chad, why don't you come along and augment and uh, correct Todd when he blows it? You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the floor is yours, Todd. I think, I think my mom did. <laughs> yeah. Why don't uh, Todd? So Todd, why don't you take over? Oh, by the way, before we get going, uh, just quickly, I've also invited Rich Beesfield. Rich is the president of the uh, the commission for the Senior Activity Center for the city. And is Barb online? Yes, I think Barb is connected. But anyway, very good. Scott, I am online. Okay, thank no you. No video Barb. though. Okay, so Todd, it's all yours. All right, thank you. I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> After that introduction, I don't know. I still think I should like go back to my office and you know take a nap. Um, so anyway, the last time we did talk was September 16th. Um, I think obviously that was a, a great time, um, a, cur a curious time. We were trying to figure out what what's going on, what's happening, where and where are we moving forward. Um, so what's changed? You know, we released the our, because that was a closed session meeting, if you remember, on the 16th. It seems like it was so far, so long ago, right? Um, it's hard to believe it hasn't been that long. So we did a media release on September 22nd-ish, somewhere around there, and that's when we told the public what's going on and where we're going and with our exciting news. Again, turning lemons into lemonade. So looking at uh, what's happened since then, we've been working on, or I say we, we the city, have been working diligently on our 2021 budget and trying to figure out wh what's gonna happen with the city, which also obviously transpires into what's gonna happen with the city uh, senior center. So um, moving forward with that, we have the approval from the council to work with HUD on a 108 loan program. So what that means is that we're looking to borrow around $3.2 million and we're looking to basically have a renovation. We're gonna purchase the building with some city money, some HUD money, but then we're also gonna use about $2.5 million for renovation. Please understand that $2.5 million is not a lot of money when you're looking at renovating a, a 30,000 square foot building. So it's gonna give us the ability to start things. We, you know, you heard me talk about this back on the 16th. We need to do this in a tiered, in a step pro process. We need to make sure that we fix the core. You know, we wanna put some windows in. We might do some light facade work. We know, we know now that we have to look at the, the roof. The roof doesn't have enough insulation, so that means we need a new roof, um, which is good. I mean. Don't look at, I hope you guys don't look at some of these things as negatives because what we're doing is we're building for a, an extended life, right? 
So by redoing the roof means that we've got another, what, 30, 40 years of life on that. So that means that that's a good thing for, for all of us here. Because in 30, 40 years, I'm not going to care about that roof. Let somebody else worry about it. I won't be under it. You know, I really enjoy you. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'll be in the Silver Sneaker Club. <laughs> As a, as a uh, platinum. <laughs> so anyway, the HVAC, uh, which is functioning, but it won't, it'll have to be upgraded also because of the way we're going to lay out the facility. So there's so many things that we've been working with uh, Joe Clark and the Growth Design Group, and we've been starting to kind of work through the wish list of how, how would we lay it out. We have, a, we have a beautiful canvas, if you think about it, and what we need to do is we need to basically figure out how we're going to tier the process. We know we need a, a gymnasium in the center. We're also looking at, and I believe I alluded to this back in the 16th, is, and, and Chad will keep me in, in check so I don't forget anything, right, Scott? Is the, we, we want to be able to use some of the space for potential leasee. So maybe it's another organization, maybe some young kids or whatever that can utilize the facility when the senior center is not. And again, the reason why I push for things like this is because of my background with operations, we need to keep our operating costs as low as possible, right? Because no longer are we gonna have a 14,000 square foot building, we're gonna have a 30,000 square foot building. And those of you that have gone from a little house to a big house all know that costs go up exponentially, right? Your heating goes up, your lights go up, things like that. We also know that as we build additional programs, we're going to also need more people to run those programs. So that's also a concern that I have. So we need to keep our operating costs in check, keep them as tight as possible, and make the building as efficient as possible, but then make it so that we can expand it as, as the uh, growth and, and, and programs grow. So Joe Clark, um, is working on some of that with, with the team. And um, we are moving forward working with HUD as far as the loan program. So there's a lot of work to do. We are just at the beginning. Um, if, if you were to look at it with an analogy, which I use a lot of analogies, we're like on the on-ramp of the highway to, our, to our, uh, our vacation trip here. So we have a lot going on. Um, it's very exciting stuff. It's gonna be a long road. 2021 is going to be basically where we close in the beginning of January on the building. Then we have to work with, uh, you know, hopefully growth on some uh, designs and engineering. And then we have to get, obviously, contractors and things like that while we get the, the HUD financing. And then, I hate to say it, but it's probably going to be a first quarter-ish of 2022 where people will be able to utilize the facility. So okay. my ask, though, nobody asked me this. It, it just says building. So I was originally going to talk about 428 and see if you guys caught on. But um, <laughs> my, my need from you guys, the, uh, from the friends group, is I really need to know that you guys are going to be willing and able to step up as part of the partners with the senior center because we are moving forward on hiring a director. It's very imperative that we hire a director for this, um, for the senior center. Um, we've been interviewing. That person um, will be obviously helping to work with the senior center team to lay it out properly, <clears throat> help define what the programs will be in the future, um, assist in communicating on a regular basis to our, our senior population, um, working with fundraising, working with marketing. We also talked about this yesterday on the fact that um, we really need to redo the strategic plan for the senior center because this is not the old senior center anymore. Uh, it's a new book. It's a totally new book. So we really need to think about that and redo this, this, the strategic plan. Sorry, it's early. Um, and by doing that new strategic plan, we need to look at our mission and vision and values and say, what do we want for the future of our new senior center? And then we really need to think about, you know, and I know I was in the strategic plan 
uh, I believe it was last year, and we talked about rebranding and things like that, and I think now is the time. 2021 should be, in my opinion, um, you know, basically where we do a, a reboot and start over. Rebrand it, get ready in 2021 so by the end of 2021 we can be fundraising. And I say we, meaning friends. It cannot be the city. And we need the friends group to um, help define what you guys are willing to take on so that we can come up with a better collaboration because there, there has to be a disconnect. I personally would like to see the friends group operating and doing the fundraising of the senior center and that the city basically, kind of like, like we do for the library, we provide um, some assistance, but we're not necessarily totally connected. We have, our, we have our oversight group that would be connected and would be working with the friends group, but it's hard to ask people to pay taxes and then, oh, by the way, could you also um, don't make some donations to our, our, uh, our senior center because you know what? They're gonna say, well, I make donations every year. It's called taxes. So there has to be a disconnect. And I know the Friends Group is a phenomenal group. We have a, a group that works with the Mead Public Library as an example, and they're a phenomenal group. But we, we really need to make sure that this is successful in the big picture. Any questions? Very good. Any questions for Todd? I'm ahead of schedule. How do you do, Chad? Oh, good. <laughs> but but I, I have a question for Chad. Was that the city administrator did very well or the older? <laughs> the only thing that I'll just give a little bit more detail on is this Section 108 uh, funding program. So how this is going to work is um, the city, the Section 108 is basically an advance of uh, block grants. So the city gets a yearly entitlement uh, allocation from HUD to spend on low to moderate income activities across the city. We do a lot of neighborhood revitalization and street projects with those funds and then provide funding to nonprofit um, public service entities. Um, what the plan would be is to use maybe basically in advance of our dollars so that HUD would uh, give us a upfront chunk of money and then we would pay it back over time with our yearly allocation. So when uh, City Administrator Wolf talks about 3.2 million, um, that is, <clears throat> well, the, the temporary or the short-term interest rate is 0.63%. Um, it, it, the HUD, HUD, will buy, HUD will buy out the note and refinance it into some permanent financing at a later date, and the interest rate may go up from there. We don't know what that looks like. Um, but at any rate, we estimate that on 3.2 million, we're going to have to dedicate about 175,000 of CDBG dollars a year for the debt service payment for the principal and interest. So we would continue each year. The council would allocate those funds towards this project and make a payment back to the federal government for 20 years, um, or a prepay. There's no prepayment penalty, so if we want to pay more, uh, we could do so. But it, it gives us an opportunity of borrowing 3.2 million without having to uh, have it go against the city's borrowing capacity under general obligation borrowing requirements. So it's it's a it's a good deal. It funds a lot of these projects across the nation with uh, entitlement communities. But it is a process, and anything working with the federal government is a process. So. Um, yeah, so it's not going to be something, it's not quick money uh, by any means, but since we have some time to get to there, as Todd said, um, we're, the closing is on or before January 15th. Um, after that point, we're hoping to uh, finalize the design drawing sometimes, sometime by June, go out to bid in August and start construction maybe in September, October, and have it be some winter construction. So end of first quarter 2022 um, seems like it makes sense that maybe occupancy could happen. So um, yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces, but it's, it's great that we found a funding source, I think, that gets us going and gets us off the ground at least, and it's not something that the council has to um, pledge their own money and go against capital improvements and all that other stuff. Uh, question, if we, if we finalize the plans in the first quarter, why do we wait till August to go out for bids? 
So the, the, plan, the first phase of the contract with Growth Design Group is to finalize the programming and the feasibility of the layout. At that point, once that's agreed upon, after we prior to closing on the building, they'll let us know to make sure that everything that you guys want to do, the team's working on, um, works and that it makes sense, and then we would close on the building. They would then finish that contract and they would move into phase two, which would be detailed design of all of the HVAC, the roofing, plans and specs, all of that stuff, and they need from basically January to June, they need six months to put that together. They have got HVAC contractors and designers and everybody else that has to come in and work through the final plans and specs. So uh, Joe thought the earliest they could get this done would be the end of June. Okay. Um, and then it takes us roughly a month of bidding and then another month for council approval. So we're looking at probably the 1st of September. Okay, that's, that's a good ex explanation. Todd? Thank you, Scott. One thing that I did challenge the team with um, during one of our meetings with, uh, with Joe Clark was that um, the new senior center is obviously thir upwards of 30,000 square feet. So one of the things that I challenged the uh, senior center team is that we as, we as a group need to quantify how many people, because you know per square foot you can only have so many people, right? So we also need to look at it, how many people can we maximize that, that building with? Where were we? Where were we? Where are we today? But then what's our max amount? So that we can look at how many programs can we put through so we can understand, and I just wanted to bring this up okay. to make sure everybody hears this, how many, uh, how many people are we ultimately going to need to operate this facility at, at some point? What's our, what's our, what's our max? You know, we can always expand on, on hours. We can always expand on, you know, internal, external activities, things like that, because I believe you guys used to take trips and stuff. And no, I haven't been on those yet. I'm not quite there. Um, but the, the point is we need, to, we need to better understand what the capacity of this facility is going to be so that we can have a strategic plan working together so that everything has you know, steps and, and throughout this whole process. Because if we don't do things like that, we're not going to be able to truly maximize the facility. We don't want to be doing this. We have time. That's, I guess, the way I look at this. If this was a business plan and we were going to the bank and we were saying, hey, we want this building, and they said, well, why do you need 30,000 square feet? Well, because my programs are here. Once we get through COVID, we're going to be able to bring in more people, and then each, you know, each year or whatever, we're, we're expecting to increase the population by X. But every time we increase the population by X, how many people are we going to need to add for operations? Right? Does that make sense? So once we understand this, it's also going to assist us in being able to plan for those upcoming increases. Because the one thing I will not like, and I'm, I'm honest and I'm straightforward, is if all of a sudden you guys come to me and say, oh, Todd, we need to hire three more people. And I'm going to say, well, why didn't we talk about this sooner? Right? Because three more people is, you know, upwards of over $300,000, depending on what they're making. And, and those are real dollars. So we need to be able to have a plan, and that's why I keep saying we need to go back to a strategic plan, and we need to have this in place so that we can all work together and be happy friends with the city. <laughs> all right? And thank you. Thank you, Todd. Did you have a question? Well, yeah, I was just wondering. Like, with the, can with can the, you go to the microphone? Is it realistic to think that if the bid is not going out until that June, you know, July period, that we would be in operation by quarter one of 2022? I mean, with construction one, that seems pretty ambitious. I, you know, we're not looking in first phase. Um, we're not looking for, we're not, it's not a huge build out by any means. It's really just partialing off the spaces, creating some large areas, getting it, getting it up and operational. I, I mean, we'll have to see. Uh, granted, you know, some of the stuff you can move in when the outside is still being done, you know, so there, I would, the end of first quarter, I think is probably more realistic. Um, you know, maybe the April, March 1st, April 1st kind of time frame, I think makes sense. Um, because that's, that would be about six, seven months, which is, uh, is what the, 
uh, designer thought would take for what's going to be needed to be done. So yeah, it's not the first. It's not the first quarter. It's not the beginning of the first quarter. I would say it's closer to the end. So it's probably the. We're. I think we're shooting for the April first time frame actually. I guess if I can just add to that real quickly, and then we'll let Marilyn beat me up. Go ahead. Um, what I anticipate, and you keep hearing me talk about, we need to do this in a tier process, right? The roof could be worked on very easily, seriously, any time of the year. They do it year round. Um, we know we want to put some, open up the walls and put some windows in. But that would be something that would have to be done very early in the construction, right? The facade work, we're probably going to do it in a, in a step process, meaning we might just paint the building first and then do some of the bump outs later because of cost, right? We, we're only going to have about two and a half million dollars and it's going to get sucked up so fast, people don't realize it's, it's kind of like when you're doing a house, a home improvement project. You know, you think it's $1,000 and $4,000 later, you're like, what happened? So we need to understand that. If we move a lot of the plumbing around, that's going to add cost, and it's also going to add time. So we really need to kind of look at what do we have presently, and then can we use the locations of things so we're not just doing basically a, a, a new build, right? The other thing is some of this stuff, if we leave certain things in place and we do like the gymnasium, which we know is very important, right? Because the sooner we can get people into the facility, the better. The gymnasium, and they're the perfect. If you, she'll put it up on the, on the screen. Scott, can you get something on the screen? Thank Perfect. You. So this is just an example. It's just a first round. But if you, if you notice that we are looking at the gym in the center, okay, and then there's hallways basically all the way around it. And in the upper right-hand corner, we're also looking at some possible lease area. So to, again, like I had said earlier, to allow for maybe some rental for another organization to come in and utilize it. So what do I envision? You know, again, we have no idea how far the dollar is going to go at this point. We haven't gotten that far. But if we can build a gymnasium, put the bathrooms in, I'd like to see a kitchen so that Marilyn doesn't kill me. I'd like <laughs> to see the lobby area put in. I'd like to see some of the, the hallways so the walls would be put up, but we wouldn't put all of the May, you know, and this is again just an assumption, we wouldn't break up all of the rooms right away. That's something that could be done later, right? Maybe we don't break up all of the HVAC right away and put ceilings in right away. There's, there's so many different things, but it needs to be engineered from the very beginning so that it can be added on to cost effectively, right? So then as we do fundraising and things like that, plus we also have to remember that we're, bring, we're looking to bring on a very high, high octane fundraiser director for, this, for the senior center that's going to basically have 2021 to help us go and look for more money. So I'm looking forward to seeing that two and a half million become, you know, maybe five million or something like that. If we can get some corporates to say, we'll do, we'll, you know, we'll match dollar for dollar. I'd love to see that. There's money out there. We just have to go and get it. And again, I think that we don't market the situation very well. So people, like I, I said last night, a lot of people don't know what's in the building and, and what the building was used for. So I think if we tap into it, we'll get more money. And if we can get more money, more walls can go up. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, any other questions uh, for these two gentlemen? Oh, Marilyn, yep. I'm sorry. Thanks, Scott. Um, I, I'm glad that we have the city and Chad and Todd on our side for the senior center. There's some strong partners and they're going to take a lot of, um, have more power with us than we were just alone before. Mm -hmm. And think of the anticipation, once you start working on that site, the whole community that whole time is going to say, oh, look at that, oh, what is that? I'm interested in that, I think there will be a great send off and lots of new people interested in the new building. Thank you, Marilyn. So one other quick follow up. So the, we didn't address the current facility. So we have uh, had a conference call with the National Park Service um, last week. They've laid out four options for us to 
uh, look at as we look at trying to either get out of that agreement. So as those of you that don't know, in 1999, the council accepted a deed from the federal government through the National Park Service to utilize this park, this property in their mind as park and recreation is the way they categorize it. So it has to be left in park and recreation, but it can't be sold and it can't be leased under those requirements. So we're looking at um, th four different options. Um, one option might be to buy out the current facility in its, in its, as it stands today and look at some redevelopment in that neighborhood. So um, there it could be a possibility of tearing that building down and redoing some new development, uh, affordable housing of some sort in that neighborhood. So we're looking at those options. We've dedicated some money uh, through some CDBG dollars to, to deal with it if we need to go that route. Um, but we're still in the fact-finding stages as to what makes the most sense for the city, and we've, we're waiting for some follow-up from the National Park Service on some of our questions, but that is being addressed as well. Excellent. Thanks for the update. Uh, I want to second what Marilyn said. I don't think we could find two more energetic, uh, capable people to support our efforts to get the Friends or the Senior Activity Center back on its feet, so you two deserve... You know what they're doing. <laughs> Yes, they do. Oh, well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Okay. Next on the agenda is, um, oh, by the way, I just want to add, we're meeting again this afternoon with Joe Clark. Over the last month, we've gotten a, had many, many meetings about with the staff and with Vicki to kind of determine how we'd want the layout to look. So we're getting a first blush look at what the plan would look like. We're updating what was up, up on the board, and that's this afternoon at three, and we'll, again, throw rocks at that and critique that again, but we're really moving along to finalize the design. Uh, treasures report, Connie, you, you've got the floor, maybe. That's very difficult to see. Right, it is a little small. Um, I can make it bigger, but then wanna, it's not all on one screen. Sure. I mean, if you blow it up a little bit, I think really that um, the, final the 2020 year to date is probably the key column, the one after the second black line. You know what? Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up in Excel. Okay. That might be I better. I think that'll be better. And it really just shows where we are um, right now in the current year, the way things are. There we go. Um, if you just want to, even if you just highlight that line or that column, if you just even just click on the column, you can kind of see. The year to date? Yes. Well, the numbers are hard to tell. There. You can see a little bit. Um, but the first section is, you know, the income we have coming in. Um, obviously, compared to last year, um, it's way down just because of everything that's happening. Um, membership dues, everything is a little behind. Um, if you scroll down, Alyssa, there are our expenses. And as you can see, um, payroll is really um, the major expense. Um, that will be offset with our PPP loan, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, we're just not going to move those dollars. We have them sitting on the balance sheet as a liability. We'll move the dollars um, to offset payroll once we know that we have the forgiveness, which I don't think is going to be a problem. Um, I have everything ready to file. I've been working with Scott in the bank. The form to the easy, easy, easier is, isn't out there on the bank's portal to file yet. So otherwise, um, it will be filed hopefully soon within the next couple weeks. Um, but that will offset a little bit. Um, but if you just go down a little bit more, you see right now we're at a $25,000 loss. Um, and in those numbers is the payroll and really the um, investment account um, for the year is, I believe, at a positive about, 14. I thought it was like 9000 The
as far as the earnings, but then we have the fees and everything in there as well. Um, so if you look at the dividend income and the investment together is 14. Um, yeah, I was thinking we had 14,000, yeah. Yeah, I don't have the statement. Um, but those two things combined are what are putting us at the $25,000 loss. I think the nine was for the month of September. Where's was the it a $9,000 loss? It was a $9,000 loss for the month of September, but the 14 is oh, for yeah. the whole year. If you look right next to it, yes, that was. The 8000 <laughs> and the four, we had another loss again um, in September. If you back up a little bit, Melissa, you can see August. See, we, we were positive, and then September went back. So overall, 14000 That's what it was. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at a, probably about a $17,000 loss right now, hopefully. Um, Melissa, we talked the other day about putting a push on for memberships and things like that yep. um, the end of December. So hopefully we'll get some income coming in. Um, and then you guys mm -hmm. can talk budget and what we are going to do as right. far as yeah. um, fees and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say the major um, problem... Uh, is that the trip program was one of our major income avenues in the, in the past. There. Last year, we made $35,000 on trips, so that was the income coming in anyway. And that was an abnormal year. An abnormal year, but this year it's almost, almost zero. It's basically. actually a negative because we had credit card fees right. from people who paid us right. on credit card, and then we ended up refunding them the money, so we're actually about negative $500. So that's been the biggest. Fees. That's been the biggest bang against our, our budget numbers this year, which we have really can't do much about, as you know. So that it is what it is. But we'll be reviewing the budget. Any questions for Connie on the current year-to-date numbers? We can look at the balance sheet as well if you want to. But okay. really, it's the investment account is what you know is the that really is our asset right there. Um, and also the equity that they that we have. So we've gone from. Mm -hmm. Could you back up, please? So we've gone from what um, six eighty to seven oh nine at the end of August. Mm -hmm. So it has been growing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the last two months, though, are going to be right. a, little, a bummer. We lost the beginning, especially of the this year. week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Very very good. Any question? Any other questions for Connie? All right, then let's move into the budget. Connie and Melissa and I met uh, a couple of weeks ago and put together what we thought would be a proposal for the budget for 2021. And as most of you know, that's really a crapshoot because we're guessing what's going to happen with the coronavirus thing. We're guesstimating on timing of the opening of the Senior Activity Center. Um, we're guesstimating how many funds we'll get, grants, contributions, et cetera. But uh, we, we put this together, and it's something to throw rocks at. Um, I'm going to kick it off, but Melissa really knows the nuts and bolts of the entire uh, numbers, which is great. So, but what we've got on the, the annual budget, you can, we'll cover the income line first, and Melissa, you just jump in whenever I flub it, okay? Okay. Corporate contributions are based, you can see our, our budget for, and projections for 2020, and we basically said the corporate contributions are going to remain roughly about the same, $1,250. Um, obviously, can, when we bring can we on back a, up one second, can yes. we explain to them the columns? Um, so the first two columns are what we budgeted for 2019 and the actual. The next two are the budget for 2020, but then column L is what we're projecting for the end of the year. It's still a guess. It's based on everything as of September 30th, and then adding in a rough estimate on what we've been experiencing the last few months. So it's not a for sure. Um, it's it's definitely a, a big giant guess. You're talking about corporate contributions line for all of it. All of it. The, oh, yes, the yeah. one I just highlighted. Right. The projected actual. It is a big giant guess. Correct. With some actual information thrown in with it. Right. And then, then the last column is what we're proposing. Right. Um, 
I might want to add that uh, that 1250 might be conservative. If you bring on a real aggressive new director that's great at fundraising, that could change significant, significantly. In fact, it's going to have to change significantly. Um, but that's something, that the number is what it is for right now. So total, um, where do you want to go now, Melissa? So I would also like to point out with the service club, um, we, we were budgeting for 10,000. That's their second tier that they have. Um, I have had a very in-depth conversation with um, somebody who is on their foundation. She just finished her tenure with the service club. Um, I think that that is going to be an unlikely get from them. Um, they are really looking at more organizations this year that are providing basic human needs, such as housing, heating, food, things like that. Um, we did talk about the possibilities of what we could offer um, and then potential, but she was very real with me that it's a very slim chance that we would get anything from them this year. She did recommend that we go ahead and still apply just to keep our name at the front of their, their thought processes. Okay. Why don't we um, go down to the bottom line for income? Total income. You can see that we're in 19 or 2019. We had total income of 86,000. Yes, it was an abnormal year for the trip program for sure. The 86 this year. The projection is $37,000 total income, and uh, the budget next year we're saying is 51, mm -hmm. which we're going to have to blow out of the water. But that's what it is. That's our best guess at this time, given what we know. Uh, let's cover expenses, unless you want, we'll just keep moving along here. Expense line. You want that grand total expense? Is there something we want to cover in the, uh, there are things we want to cover in the expense line that I want to point out. Okay, what would you like to point the out? The major thing is the um, salaries. Total payroll expense. Just about everything else is remaining roughly about the same as what we had projected budget-wise for the last couple of years. But when it comes to payroll expenses, what I wanted to point out, we've gone from 43, this year it's 53, and next year 62. I just want to reiterate what we committed to the city on. One is we agreed at a prior meeting to approve and expense $9,000 out, out of our funds to support the new director uh, position. That's 9,000, which we did not cover before. It, um, but we're, we recognize the city needs some assistance going forward, given their budget constraints. So we said, we'll chip in $9,000. The other thing is that um, Rachel will be coming a full-time city employee, effective the first of the year, as we all know. And we've agreed to, even though she's a city employee, we will still compensate her. And that would also include covering some of the benefits that she doesn't currently enjoy. So we'll be paying for the benefits that a city employee would normally accrue. Does that make sense, Vicki? So that's one of the numbers, for, that's one of the reasons it's gone up to $62,000. We bit the bullet and said, we'll do it, we'll back you up. Uh, even though we don't have the funds, but we do have an investment portfolio at Wisconsin Bank of Trust, which we're gonna have to dip into. Um, let's go down. I think everything else is roughly about the same. No major shakes. That was the big one. Um, the trip program, I just thought about. The trip program, what did we put in for that? I'm trying to recall. For, for in income? Income, yeah. Um, zero? Oh, zip. Because we're unsure if trips will be feasible next year at this time. And that's another reason why uh, the numbers are so significantly different from last year is we've put in no, no positive uh, income uh, for the trips. So that's another double whammy, trips and uh, payroll. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the bottom line, we are projecting to have a budget uh, net uh, loss of $23,500 next year. That's an improvement from this year's projection of losing $25,000. <laughs> but if you look at what happened in uh, 2019, that was a big surplus. 
So we're basically about the same position as we were back in 2017 or 18. Um, but a lot of it's totally out of our control and nothing, I don't know what else we could have done budget wise or uh, to, to affect these numbers. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the budget? Should we be putting that $10,000 in there if it's not likely? That's up to you guys. Pardon? We could just change it from service club to other. Yeah. Other just change the other to 15. Okay. So the end numbers are all still the same. It's just where it's coming from is different. Sure. Okay. You just have to yeah, make an effort or something to either get it into the income or pull it out of the expenses. So have we, have we decided to keep it in there? What do, I didn't hear the conversation. Other. Other, put it, we'll put it in other. I'm very optimistic that given the qualifications that we're, we're going to have when we assign, we um, hire a brand new director is that we're going to fill that void substantially. We have to. Okay. I'm, I guess I should, I guess we need to, we'll make an adjustment. We'll move the service club to other. Yep. And I, I guess if there's no of uh, further discussions, I'll put it up to a vote that this is our budget for next year. Do I have a motion to approve this budget as amended? Move. Marilyn moves. Do I have a second? Oh, Andrew sorry. seconds. Here, you're double teaming everything. That's great. Teamwork. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Very good. Thank you, aye. Alice. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, Vicki, could you give us a little update on our search for the new director of senior services? Okay, so um, just to give you a little, uh, we had suspended the, the search uh, earlier in the year when we had posted the position in July. Um, then we had all the building issues and we decided that we would put that position on hold because we didn't want to bring someone in in the midst of some a lot of unknowns at that time. So we reposted the position uh, earlier this month and the position closed last Friday on October 23rd. We've had 25 applicants. I've identified six to eight uh, candidates for phone screens um, and we, uh, we had one interview yesterday uh, with a strong candidate and we will ident I will have two or three more uh, for next week for the panel to interview. Uh, so you know who's on the panel. We have uh, Todd Wolf who's the city administrator, Scott as the friends president, uh, Rick Miesfeld as the commission chair, uh, Jane Brill who is the director of generations and Laura Gum who serves both on the commission and uh, on the friends board. So, and then myself on that panel. So, so I believe that we have a panel that has uh, contributors from each of the mm -hmm. pieces that, that are touched by the senior activity center. Um, let's see, I think, uh, our hope is, and that gave me great hope from what Administrator Wolf also said uh, yesterday at the end of our conversation, um, that we will be filling this position hopefully this year yet, and that mm -hmm. that's that's a positive, so that we can go into next year with a strong leadership and with a, developing a plan, and that can allow for strategic planning and everything else that goes with um, how we need to have uh, right. that director significantly involved with the planning, so. Right, one of the things that Vicki added to the job description was fundraising experience and success. And uh, the first candidate that we interviewed last evening definitely has that, so mm -hmm. it's very, very encouraging and I look forward to the interviews next week. Yeah, so we do have a couple <clears throat> candidates that are um, from outside of the Sheboygan County area, I would say. Uh, who also have some either marketing or fundraising experience. Uh, and I think they will be interesting to talk to to see, you know, what other aspects of their leadership that they could bring to this role. I'm very right. hopeful that we'll find a really good candidate who will meet the needs right. of the friends. 
One of the reasons we, we do want to make an offer quickly is it would be nice to have this position on filled come January 1st. Absolutely. Um, yeah. In time for us, to, in time for them to put their thumbprint on the final designs of the building and the, and the programming, also to have them involved in uh, the strategic planning session that we'll talk about a little bit further down the road. Yeah. So, and Vicki's done a great job. Oh. 25. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just, I just wanted to, to touch a, a comment on Rachel's position too, so that it looks like a great expense, and it is a great expense on the friends part for 2021, but that will be reduced 20% over year over year until uh, the city does take on that role right. completely. I just want to remind people that that is not going to be a, a long-term expense. And then the contribution for the director's position is a one-time uh contribution from That's the correct. friends. So that will not be the same in 2022. It might might cost a short term to support Rachel and the director, but longer yeah. term over a four or five year period as we discussed at a previous I do meeting, think it, it's, we're ahead, we're, yeah. we'll be ahead of the game when it comes to, to expenses yeah. for payroll. As far as equity and staff, I think it makes sense to have yep. everybody have the same benefit package and yep. Yep. Absolutely. the same opportunities as having a divided staff, having one, some be friends and some be city. I think that's, yep. it's hard. Yep. Okay. Um, so, okay. Any, any questions for Vicki? Great. Thank you. Oh, Yo, Marilyn. Marilyn. Yeah. Uh, fundraising ability is tremendous and rare. In the past, we had this very affable gentleman who was going to help us raise lots of money. <laughs> he told us lots of things. He could do nothing. That's right. Yeah, so I think, we, did we not check on if he actually was successful? The, that I, was one of the first committees that I was on when yeah. I joined the, the Senior Activity Center was that they had been trying to raise, they had been trying to raise funds, the previous board, for about two years and nothing was happening and they hired a guy and paid him $25,000 to be a fundraiser for us. And my first duty was to fire him. <laughs> he did nothing. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then as you know, we proceeded just to just do it and backfill and, and we're better off today. We had a complete building and our, and our portfolio grew. So we saved 25 grand. I, I think with I the, remember that. I, who's, the, the candidates that we're speaking to, we will be able to even ask those questions, you know, to ask yeah. for more specifics from them as candidates coming forward. What would their plans look like or what would their plans be so right. that we don't go down a road that is well, all you know, talk? So. While we've been sitting here, I just got an uh, a email from one of the candidates with a whole bunch of ideas. <laughs> They're raring to go. All right. That's, all that's right. very that's encouraging. Great. That's great. <laughs> well, we put together, or will that person and a committee put together a capital campaign budget then as well? Absolutely. Yes. We should mm -hmm. repeat the question for those online. So the question was, will the will the uh, the new director, when they're hired, put together a capital campaign budget prior to the end of this year? It'll, it will depend on on the timing of when that person would be able to start and you know yeah. in that but I do expect that um, that will be part of the of the 2021 uh, experience is that there will be they will need to be a, a yeah. capital campaign what that looks like how that's planned out um, that isn't something that would be thrown together necessarily quickly but to have that yeah. strategic thought uh, also to have part of that be with the strategic plan. Um, exactly. So that strategic planning, I think that would be a great thing to do right. sooner rather than later. As soon as that person is hired and on board, that that the friends participate in that, and that capital right. campaign comes out of that strategic planning. Yeah, I would hope that we had, can have a, a strategic planning session. We'll jump ahead a little bit, uh, sometime mid first quarter, maybe February time period. Give the new director, give her a chance to get her feet wet, you know, find out what we're all about and to, so that she can be a contributor to our strategic plan going forward. So I'm kind of thinking, let's push to have a strategic planning meeting in February. And that would involve the city, it would involve us, it would involve the commission, Rich's group, um, just like we did a couple of years ago, which was very successful. And one of the questions I had with regards to the strategic planning session is, we had a facilitator last time. What was it? What was Donna Furman. The facilitator was Donna Furman. Yeah, I thought she did a very adequate job. Mm -hmm. 
I did. And, I agree. And everybody here got to know her a little bit during that planning session. Most of us did. Um, I would vote to bring her back on board. I think that, and maybe the the new director may have input in that as well. Maybe yeah. they have worked with someone too. True. So, but I I think that having a facilitator is a good thing right. to do. Right. So that's kind of a. Thank you, Vicki. Anything else to add? No, okay. I don't have any other questions. Oh, very um, good. Um, I will just say though, it, when when the director's brought on board, I will I will graciously step aside so that I'm not. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So I will be available for questions, but I also want to make sure that that director has freedom to make their decisions. We know so, where your office okay. is, All right. you betcha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Vicki. Okay, we've asked uh, Melissa to give us a little update on what, uh, where we currently stand with the Senior Activity Center, so it's yours, Melissa. So on October 1st, we moved into, um, Nope, that's not true. Um, yes, it is. Sorry. <laughs> On October 1st, we started doing programming. We moved out of the parking lot at the center, and we have moved into the D-Land Community Center. Um, once the announcement was made public of our intentions to purchase the Save-A-Lot building, I was able to move forward with working with DPW to secure um, a park shelter for our use. Uh, very quickly was able to get D-Land through the end of the year um, and I, for Monday through Friday. Um, we have now worked out an agreement where we have it starting January 1st. We have it Monday through Thursday. Um, and that is because they are hoping to be able to do park rentals next year. And with D-Land, the likelihood that they would have a rental Monday through Thursday is a whole lot slimmer than if they would have one on a Friday. And if they get a rental, our programming is canceled for the day so that they can do the rental. So this was an agreement that I worked out with their biz, with DPW's business manager, Don Sokolowski, that this would allow for minimal interruptions with our programming. Their big request was that um, they didn't want to pay overtime to their park guys for cleaning. So Rachel and I have had a meeting with um, Ryan and Mike, who are the main guys down there. They're also the guys that took care of the outside of our building at the Wisconsin Avenue uh, location. So we're very familiar with them. They're great guys. And we worked out a cleaning schedule with them. They're going to clean the, the facility on Monday mornings and Thursday afternoons. And then Rachel and I are going to clean it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays sometime while we're there. Because one of us has to be there at all times during programming, even if it's not a program that we're leading. Um, so, you know, if another program's going on, we're able to go ahead and go in and, and clean the bathroom and do something while we're standing there. Um, and the reason for that schedule is because that way they can clean it before an event would happen over the weekend and then again after so that we're not doing the harder cleanings. Um, last week we moved into phase two, so we're Just now... Just a, a quick question. Yeah. How is it going at Deland Park right now? It's going really well. Um, we are requiring pre-registration for everybody and we, the first week, we were like, okay, there's room, you can go ahead and come in, but you really need to pre-register. We have stopped doing that, we are now being firm. You have to pre-register because there's a limited number of spots and some of the classes are starting to fill up for Rachel's stuff. Um, and so they have to pre-register, They have, and they're being asked the health questions, we're taking their temperatures, they're wearing masks while they're inside, um, and we are now realizing we also have to be firm on the start time because every time somebody comes, we have to, Rachel has to stop her class, go to the door, make sure they're on their list, ask the questions, take their temperature, and let them in. So we are now starting to be firm. If class starts at 10, it starts at 10, not 10.01. And if you come at 10.01, we're really sorry, but the, if we do that for everybody, then everybody's missing out on class. And we, um, we have to have a certain amount of time in between the classes for people to leave, uh, Rachel to clean doorknobs and everything, and then to get new people in the door. And we've got that down to where we can have just a 15 minute break in between the classes. But if a class starts five minutes late, we lose a large chunk of time for that interim. Um, so it's just getting people used to that. They're so used to being able to just come whenever, walk in the door and it doesn't really interrupt class. So it's just 
getting them used to there's a new protocol right now um and we've been trying to be really flexible and lenient with that but we're getting to the point where we have to be firmer because they're now taking advantage of that flexible and the the second question i had was can you use volunteers to help clean um we can um we haven't gotten to that point yet of using the volunteers because but there's nothing preventing you if you had to. There's nothing preventing us. Okay. We've had volunteers that have said we can. Um, last week we moved into phase two. Uh, so we're now equal with the county, um, which is very exciting. We brought back yoga. And this week we brought back Tai Chi. Um, so that's phase two, part A. We're kind of leaning towards we're going to stick with that until after the first of the year, just because the newsletter for December is due next week. Um, and we are only a week and a half into what phase two part A looks like. Um, And we're closed for the week between Christmas and New Year's anyway. So we'll start working with our program leads for the other programs in phase two to bring them back after the first of the year. Uh, The program leads that I have talked to that are in that phase are 100% great with that. They are kind of like, let's get through the holiday season and then start up. They're all all comfortable with that. We did have a meeting with our program leads. Uh, We invited them all here to the council chambers and Todd spoke with them to let them know what is going on and why why we're doing things the way we're doing them. Um, And that's been great. Our program leads have really stepped up on the support for Rachel and I as we move forward. Um, Bringing us into returning personal property that's in the building when it comes to the program leads. A lot of them have stepped up and said, hey, we know you're not going to have storage for our stuff, so we'll go ahead and take it and store it, we'll clean it, we'll store it, and then we'll bring it back when it's time, Um, which is great. We have cleaned out, um, when we do our pickup on Monday, and I have two more programs coming, we will have cleaned out our four largest programs with our program leads taking the supplies. Um, some things the program leaders are going to go ahead and distribute to people, like our paints. Um, our, our paint instructor is going to go ahead and distribute the paints amongst, amongst those that paint, because if it sits for the next year or so, the paints aren't really going to be as good anymore. Um, so at least they're getting used and not getting thrown away. Yay. Um, but the personal property return has been going really well. People are calling in, requesting their items. We're asking them to be somewhat specific. We want to know what the item is and the general location um, because we're not searching the building for somebody's sweater that they thought they left in Michigan, but it's actually in Erie. Um, That said, if we happen to find it in Erie, yay, we'll give it to them. We're not going to hold anybody's stuff, but we're also not going to spend a bunch of time searching 14,000 square feet for somebody's item because they don't remember where it is couple of things that don't fall into that category are is the artwork because the artwork got moved around so much the artists don't actually half the time know what room their art is in so we are searching the premises for that um, and a lot of people have come to get their stuff we're doing a drive through pickup style so they come to our parking lot entrance and Rachel and I have everything that's been requested lined up inside the building in plastic trash bags or in boxes They pull up, we walk in the building, we get their items, and then we hand it to them. Inside their packet of items is a little piece of, it's a half sheet of paper, thanking them for coming to the center, for all that they've, all their patronage through the years, thanking them for their patience as we deal with this, and also letting them know that their items may have been exposed to fluctuations in temperature and humidity, and to clean things appropriately. Um, And... Todd did say at our program leaders meeting about the mold. So a lot of our program leaders are aware of that. Um, and a couple other people have now been asking. So we've been, we've been very, very good about reminding them it's not toxic mold. It's gentle mold. You can clean it with dish soap. You can put it in a washing machine or a dishwasher and it'll be fine. It's just, we can't do that for every item in the facility. Um, and so it's been going really well. People have been really, it's been a a flip from this frustration because they don't know what's going on and they think we're hiding stuff to, oh my goodness, I can't believe you guys have been dealing with this for this whole time. Are you okay? What can we do to help you? What do you need from us? And so that's been a really nice flip. That's great. Yeah. Very good. Any questions for Melissa? 
when you say D land, are you talking the park pavilion that's down by the lake or the one up the top of the hill? The park pavilion by the lake. Um, and then one other note is that our foot care clinic, when we first had to reclose, we started operating that out of Kiwanis Park, um, and that we have now booked for the all of next year at Kiwanis Park as well. So that's been really nice. We're able to keep that program going. Question I have, uh, for future board meetings, could we have that at Dillon Park? We would have to stop programming. Because okay, Rachel so is not here because she's uh, teaching two different classes we'll during this time. Okay. Yeah. This is big. Yeah, this, this is big. Yeah, this is bigger. This is fine. I'm just quite curious. Okay, good. Very and good. there's there's no internet right now at D-Land. That's true. Um, okay. This is much better. Yeah, and dumb, so we are working on question. getting <laughs> internet down there so that... Um, Okay. So Rachel is the one who's mostly going to be down there for programming uh, purposes. We we had a very real talk. She's not super comfortable in office settings. That's just not her speed, and I'm fine with it. So me being here and her being down there really fits well to our personalities. So for the most part, that's how it's going to be. We'll obviously flip back and forth from time to time. But we're working on getting internet in some way down there so that she can do work without using her okay. personal hotspot, but also so she can tap into our software system so that um, people, eventually we could start doing sign-ins again, like at the sign-in stations instead of Rachel having to manually do it, um, but also maybe get people registered while they're there. She could, like, it, you know, somebody, three people say as they're leaving, I want to sign up for the next two classes, then she can get them signed up while she's down there versus this having to call in every time. Okay, thank you very much, Melissa, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Uh, just a couple other loose odds and ends. Um, if for, uh, before I move into that, is there any other new business that we should be discussing? Anybody have anything to bring to the floor? Okay, nope, okay. I, I was having conversations with our insurance company. As you know, the Friends is we do have an insurance policy for liability purposes. We pay around $1,200 a year, so I thought I'm gonna probably get a no, but I'll have conversations with them anyway. Our insurance company is the Cincinnati Insurance Companies, and they have a local representative, and I have had hours of discussions with them, knowing that our contract wouldn't cover us, but I was just trying to appeal to his heartstrings. And <laughs> and, I, and he finally came back to me, and I have a letter here for the files that says that we are not covered. We would only be, we have a liability per, uh, per, uh, per, a policy, uh, and Friends is not liable for what has happened to the building, so we really can't claim against it. I did say we would hit him up when it comes time for raising funds for the new building, though, and he, uh, he chuckled, uh, but I'm going to take him up on that one. Um, I guess that... Pardon? <laughs> right. At least $1,200 from that. Minimum. Where do you bet? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and I've got a meeting after this meeting with Melissa concerning a rebranding proposal. Well, yeah. if I met with Ale Gavada of the Ideal Works. Um, I used to work with Ale uh, before I worked at the center. And just a con it was just a casual conversation of what a rebranding would look like. Um, Ale is familiar with us. She and her husband Marcos have been into the facility to talk with Vicky and I about another project that they were working on. And she did send me a proposal. It does have a very nice 35% nonprofit discount on it. Um, it does not include what things would look like after that, like it includes coming up with a, a new name, coming up with a logo. It does not include the actual push out of what that looks like, but it can. It just didn't in this first proposal. So we'll be reviewing We're that. Gonna, yeah, whatever talk we about learn, that. we'll share with you going forward. Okay, that's it for the business. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Marilyn? Oh, yes. yes. Oh. Andrew? Second. Second. <laughs> All approved, say aye. aye. <laughs> Meeting's aye. adjourned. Aye. Very good. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It was good to see you again. Aye.